up? This is Sever from Sumo Psycho, and you're listening to Louder. So I'm here with Sky again, off yeah. Sumo Psycho. Yeah, hell yeah. Back in the UK. Yes. Is it the fourth time already, right? Yeah, fourth time. We're really happy to be back. We love it over here. Every time we come, it's always a pleasure. So we're just excited to be back and with the Butcher Babies as well. Last time Matt said he's going to buy a house in the UK? <laughs> Happened already? No, not yet. We haven't made enough money yet. Okay. Is well, you going to buy a house together? <laughs> Maybe. One day we'll, we'll make a mansion and we'll invite all the psychos that live in Psycho City to come live with us. Okay. Well, Birmingham's kind of crazy already. So just join the crew. Um, even Samuel L. Jackson says he's going to buy a house in Birmingham. Really? So he can be a neighbor. Oh, I never heard that. Yeah, it's new, but oh. who knows? Maybe it's fake. <laughs> so you've got a new member. Yes. Andy left. Mm-hmm. Met Trotzy? Trozzy? Trozzy, yeah. Trozzy joined. Um, rumor has it online that uh, Andy left because he was tired of being the little spoon. <laughs> well, you would know that, wouldn't you? You have first-hand it's, account. What, what are you hinting there? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Andy uh, had the craziest, we all had the craziest 2015 ever, um, and he just kind of realized how much of a real commitment it is to be in a band, how much you're away from home, how, much, how little money you make and come home with, and he just decided that his lifestyle choice was he wanted to try to, you know, get his own place and, you know, kind of live a different lifestyle so we we're like okay that's cool because as much as we love you we want you to be happy you're a friend so we kind of let him do his thing and then uh, we had a bunch of auditions to try to find somebody and we were the clock was ticking down to this tour and it was like I think only two weeks before we left on this tour that we got uh, Matt Trozian and uh, he had the the months available and we're like okay let's try this so literally the first show we ever played with him was our first show on this tour in Nottingham and it's been going pretty well um, we're like nine shows in now so things are feeling pretty good but this is kind of like our trial run to see how we like him how he likes us and how crazy it is so yeah so we're gonna see how it goes and he's fine with being the little spoon <laughs> the most important thing that's what's gonna keep him the man yeah there you go <laughs> okay so the last time we talked we've mentioned that there should be a change in the definition of sexy right so the boys are gonna step up <laughs> and i've watched the latest videos uh-huh. and is it matt that's going half naked as one of the turnouts <laughs> No, actually, that was my brother. Oh, okay, keeping the sexy in the family. Yeah. Owning sexy, okay. Yeah, that was my brother. and uh, But it's funny, when you put the helmets on, anybody acts crazy, right? Because they don't have their face, okay. so no one knows who they are, so they can be as crazy as possible. Okay. So well, we brought all of our friends to be in the video, and, you know, they're all kind of shy, but as soon as the helmets go on, it's like, no one's going to know who I am. I'm just going to do the weirdest thing, so... We had a lot of fun filming that video. I was looking for tattoos, so I thought it was Matt. Yeah. But apparently it's not. No. But rumor has it online again that uh, Matt is taking over your French-made outfit. <laughs> and that's his on-stage costume, just to be as sexy as you can be. And, you know, yeah. French is sexy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he'll squeeze into that one, but... <laughs> Yeah, he, we've got some new uh, stage clothes actually this time. I, I sewed on a bunch of patches onto their jean vests right here. You can see I uh, kind of custom made some vests for them so they could wear it from Psycho City. So yeah. <laughs> okay, well I'm still waiting for the French outfit for, for Matt. <laughs> oh, I, I think bad. he's going to rock it. Okay, he has my support. Aww. Also, can we expect uh, a boys pinup calendar? For 2017? I don't know. We'll see how that one would sell. I don't know. The guys are a lot more shy than me, if you could believe. They uh, don't really want to take it off. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're looking for, <laughs> for people to buy it, you can always go for prisons. Yeah. yeah I think it's going to go really well in prisons. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hate me next time. Uh-huh. So, what's up with the future of the band? The last video showed some sort of a teaser of a climatic battle between you and yeah. the baddie. Yeah, so, we call him the ugly. Yeah, are we coming to an end? Yeah, well, we've got three more videos to do. And we've got a kind of a storyline that we were following and to get to the end. Uh, but we just have to hammer those out before we do the next record. Because the re- next record is going to start all new, brand new story. It's, it's going to kind of end the Lost in Psycho City saga and we're going to do something else. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. But we're kind of waiting to get home and kind of finish this up. Because we've had the ideas in our head for a while. So 
So the tour kind of put everything on hold. I know that about yeah. eight of the songs are already ready. Yeah, we've got about half of them. Uh, I'm actually trying to write, if I have time on the road, a few like melody and lyric ideas. Um, but yeah, once we get home, we're definitely going to buckle in this tour and the tour in the States has kind of pushed everything a bit back for the record. Um, but in a way, it's a good thing because it's helping us get experience, get out there, get build our, our fan base bigger so that next year we can come back with the new music and, and hopefully do a headline tour out here. In the last few tours, are they helping come up with some new collaborations, either on stage or for the record? Yeah, well, like la at the end of our last tour, we got to hang out with Benji Webb and we did a music video with him for our song, Moo Mountains. So that was really cool. And then uh, we just made new friends in the Butcher Babies and we've talked about doing a song live together. So we haven't figured it out yet, but maybe in the next few shows you might see something. People come out. So there's nothing recorded or planned to be recorded no. for the album with the babies? <laughs> no, no, nothing right now, but we're... You know, we're getting to be fast friends, and it is very cool being on the road with two other uh, females. Uh, for me to like sh trade secrets on how to, you know, do your makeup and not look sweaty while you're on stage and all those things. So it's a lot more. It's a lot more fun sometimes to have someone be like, "Oh my gosh, I forgot my eyelash glue," and they're like, "I have some." And you're like, "Yes, no one in the boys would ever have that." Um, I was wondering if you ever came back to Colorado to get your stash from the border. <laughs> Did that happen? No, we haven't been back there. It might still be there. Yeah. So do you still have the coordinates? I think I think they are. Some, in someone's phone, there's some GPS coordinates somewhere. Okay, do you want to share what's there? Or uh, is it still a secret? It's, it's our buried treasure. Oh, right we don't want to give it away, so yeah. then someone will steal our buried treasure. Okay. <laughs> um, and I was wondering, the video for Cry Murder, Yeah. is there uh, an intention? tribute to No Doubt kind of reminded me of Just a Girl. Ah! Oh. So skipping between the red rooms. Kind of it's not, it wasn't completely intentional, no. We just actually, it was so cold outside in the Canadian winters that we just were like, we have to film something inside and we thought how simple it would be to make it look like a room's kind of closing in on us. And that's where we kind of just decided to paint all the walls a weird color and we thought orange would kind of like contrast with my blue hair at the time. And we just kind of went for it. But I do, I always... I always have no doubt probably in the back of my mind so it's probably subconsciously trying to imitate them in a bit a bit of a way I guess. So you're not tired of the comparison or the relation to no doubt. No, I don't I don't think so. I mean like to me like Gwen is one of like the the first like real female performance that I remember watching on TV and seeing her doing push-ups in between singing just a girl and thinking how badass that was. So to me I try to keep up that energy you know, in my performances, is always kind of pushing the envelope. Okay, how about the comparison to uh, Robin Sparkles? Who's no? that? Um, how about your mother? So no, Rob I even see. I don't watch TV, so I don't have that comparison. Oh, it's a Canadian representation. Oh. She used to be a teenage pop star. Oh, see, yeah, I don't know the reference. Sim Castles in the Sand. Ah. You gotta watch it. <laughs> oh man, yeah, so. maybe my friends would know that. I haven't seen that show. Okay. So next time, <laughs> maybe. Um, just gonna sum up with one kind of serious question. Okay. You've been going um, for a few good years already, mm -hmm. touring with some girls, with some boys, um, performing to girls and boys. Do you feel like there is a change in representation of girls and boys on stage? Ah, I don't know. I mean, more acceptance. Yeah. More expectations. You know what? I I don't necessarily see, on stage like I think when you hit the stage and you have the power and you take control of that situation. What no matter what gender you are, people that come to a rock show are definitely looking for somebody to lead them and tell them when to rock out and what to do. And you have to as soon as you don't show that confidence, no matter what gender you are, then you'll falter. So I think the important thing is to just be that leader that they want you to be. Um, I mean, coming out with Butcher Babies, I think is kind of cool because as far as uh, really heavy metal music, I find, uh, you know, we're not that kind of metal. We consider ourselves more punk um, and dance hall. So it's not like tr true metal. So I think it was a little nerve wracking thinking of how many like hardcore metal fans it would be at these shows and how we we're going to win them over uh, with our music. But I think because of the fact that... Uh, 
butcher babies have kind of led the way to be like, yeah, like you can be uh, completely hardcore and ferocious and they scream and everything, but then they can also sing and then they can also like, you know, show a feminine side that sometimes doesn't get seen in that genre. To me, it kind of opens up the door a little bit to what we do, which kind of takes it even further with a lot more singing and a lot more like... uh, more femininity and that kind of stuff, you know, with me kind of like prancing around like a, like a Harlequin type of thing, you know? So I feel like there's lots of similarities in between like our energies on stage, not necessarily our music, but the way that we like take control of a situation, just like bite their heads off and stuff in the audience. So do you feel like as a girl going on stage, is it easier to get attention or um, that are, there's people are still expecting a guy to go on stage and scream at them? <laughs> Well, I think that there's definitely, I'm sure you'll meet a bunch of guys in the audience today if you tried that are like gaga goo goo over like, oh, it's a girl doing it. Oh my God, she's so like this or that or she has boobs. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Um, which to me is like a little silly, but you know, people have their their things they like to see. I, I, for, for me, I like to see powerful women do their thing, but it's not exactly the same context of like just drooling over them in that way. But, I mean, then there's fans that just just honestly love the music, honestly love just seeing females being empowered and confident, and that's what I love. So there are a few of those weird kind of like, just like, oh, I just want a picture with you, and like guys that'll try to like kiss you at the merch booth and stuff, and you're like, okay, dude, like, I'm meeting like a ton of people tonight, it's like, you're yeah, you're Mr. Right coming right now, like, it's kind of a weird situation to, to try to like kiss on someone. <laughs> Unless they just had garlic. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you feel like that's a goal, empowering women? Oh, yeah, for sure. Or is it just a, a thing that guys come up with? Yeah, all girls want to just collaborate together and sing Kumbaya and take over the world. Yeah, no, no, no. I think, you know, to me, I'd love to live in a world where it's like you can just be called a like a, a metal band and not necessarily a female-fronted metal band. Um, but I do like... I. I don't know. I, I feel like the genre, the lines in, in um, gender are being so blurred these days, which I like. I like making people feel like they're individuals and not necessarily like you fit into this box or this box or that box or that box. But there are some things that like, because we're a minority still, there are certain things that we still have to fight for in order to get to that point where everybody's just cool with no matter which way you are or what you like or what you do or who you are that you're accepted. So, I mean, the, you could say the same thing about transgender performers or gay or lesbian performers and things like that. It's just like everyone just accepting that it doesn't really matter what your sex is or what your sexuality is. Like, you can still be a powerful front person for music, you know? I'm thinking of the emo bands that sometimes they're singers. They're kind of, they have a transgender voice. Yeah. Like Kellen Quinn. Okay, uh, I haven't the first, heard of them before. Um, the band is named uh, Sleeping With Sirens. Oh, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. singer has some sort of a female-ish voice. Mm-hmm. So the first few times I, I was not sure whether it's a guy or a girl. But I still liked him. Yeah. So it's kind of genderless. Just sounds yeah. cool. Um, I had one last one. Oh, can you elaborate on what happened last time you were in London? The show stopped. <laughs> yeah. So um, are you talking about the time with the fire truck? Yeah, the headliner show. Yeah. Was it so hot in there? Yeah, it got so hot. <laughs> So for whatever reason, I'm still not 100% sure why, but the fire trucks came and luckily we had literally just finished our set and the alarm the alarm went off and everybody got rushed outside and then there was this big fire truck that came and all these fire trucks were coming in and we were laughing. We were like, oh yeah, we set the place on fire because we're so hot with our music. Um, so that was pretty funny, but it was cool because, uh, because the venue had to kind of shut down and let them investigate. They had us all in the street. We just had a street party. And we just all hung out in the street with all the fans and just, like, took pictures and hung out by the fire truck. So it was awesome. Only in London. I know. <laughs> Sky, is there anything else you want to add to fans and uh, listeners? Yeah, I just want to let all the listeners know that are waiting for our second album that we're going to be working really hard on it coming up. We've got lots of cool ideas for it. And that the pledge campaign is still open for those of you that want to pre-order our second album. And got lots of cool bundles for them to check out. And in the meantime, for all the people that have pledged, we're going to be releasing some really exclusive, cool content for just for the people that have pledged to kind of hold them over until the record comes. So there's going to be lots coming down the pike. Okay, and if I'm second, there's something called Battles of the Psychos. Is yeah, it's still going on. It's still going on. Actually, everyone can go check out. We have the Battle of the Psychos right now. Is the do what you no. 
Yeah, crowd control. <laughs> crowd control, aka do what you want, uh, challenge where we want to get everyone's reactions of their friends and family members to our music or videos. So we want you to like either videotape or take a, a photo of you showing your friend or family member our music and what they think about it. Okay, sounds very cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, Scott, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'll see you on stage in a second. All right.